to be you're chasing a story. Just proves the point. You better be careful who you text. What do you got? The bloom has come off Roseland as two councilmen have resigned after the anti-Semitic and racist text messages they were sending became public. And the two people involved are Councilman David Jacob and Councilman Tom Tsilionis. I have the text messages. They're way too inappropriate for me to read out loud. And the councilmen who are sending them talk about their male body parts. David, how do I become Jewish? I want to be half Jewish, there's a slur, and half African American, referring to a body part. The other text message. First, the rabbi needs to take a bigger cut. The, the other text message. I'm legally changing my name to Schwartz N-word. Then another message says, screw that. Another message, lol. 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 So I spoke to the residents of Roseland about that. This is a nice town. I work in this town for Eastern Concrete Materials as, as a mixer driver. Nothing but nice things to say, but for them to do this is totally out of line with the way, the way they should conduct themselves as elected officials. I think it's disgraceful. These are public officials. We live in a diverse town. They should be, shouldn't be talking that way. It's funny because it's coming from, like I said, political people who think it's funny. So to see them do it, you know, it makes you think, what's really going on? And Beyond you those it's closed just doors. A bad joke. It's, it's, oh, it's the worst, it's a really horrible joke. I wanted to find out more about these text messages, so I spoke to the editor of The Progress. He was the first person to actually publish these text messages. Who are these men? I mean, they're all white. Yes, they're all um, white Republican councilmen in their 50s. And uh, yeah, I was just about to ask you, how old are these? Mm -hmm. ones? Yeah, they're, they're in their 50s, and they 50s. Yes. I thought you, some don't get wiser with age. No, apparently. Well, <laughs> certainly not in this case. Then I asked him why he decided to make these text messages public. Roseland is facing um, affordable housing issue right now, where they're behind on their obligation to the state. So what they're doing is they have to come up with policy and vote on how many affordable housing units they're going to have. And affordable housing is traditionally for lower income minority families. So our concern was you have a guy who's throwing around racial slurs, who's voting on behalf of the public, and we just didn't feel that was right. When you hold a public office, you need to carry yourself at, like a person who deserves mm -hmm. that office. We saw what happened. It almost cost the president yeah. his presidency because of a conversation that was just Although, oh, locker room. Well, you could say, actually, you Come could on. say. It, it caused a actually, lot of trauma. You could say that those comments getting out didn't not only didn't hurt the president elected. at all, but it a did. lot of people are saying, you know what? These are the kinds of ridiculous conversations that take place behind closed doors. They're totally inappropriate when they get out into the public view. I think the bigger issue here is the guy that leaked it and then everybody jumps on it like it's a real story. See, I think the real issue here was that these jokes hit a little too low below the belt. Do you get it? Literally. Huh? Oh. Huh. Huh.